Hey, Everballers, if you haven't joined Stitcher Premium yet, now is the perfect time. It gets you completely ad-free episodes of hundreds of shows like Comedy Bang Bang, WTF with Mark Marin, and Bitch Sesh, a real Housewives breakdown. You also get 21,000 hours of exclusive content, new exclusive originals like Freedom with hosts Scott Aukerman, Laura Lapkus, and Paul F. Tompkins. They're launching every week for premium members. If you love podcasts, you are missing out. Plus, most importantly, when you listen to ad-free episodes on Stitcher Premium, your favorite podcasters get paid. Help support your favorite shows and join Stitcher Premium today. You can get a free month of listening by going to stitcherpremium.com. Use the promo code VERBAL. Welcome to the Solid Verbal. The Solid Verbal. Come after me! I'm a man! I'm 40! I've heard so many players say, well, I want to be happy. You want to be happy for a day? Eat a steak. It's that woo woo! And now, Dan and Ty. Welcome back to the Solid Verbal, boys and girls. My name is Ty Hildenbrand. Joining me, as always, from over there in New York City, my good friend Dan Rubenstein. Sir, how are you? Life is grand, Ty. Life is wonderful. How are you doing? I am doing well. What are we doing tonight? Why <laughs> Why do we both have this like shot of life in us tonight? Oh, uh, narcotics. Right. We have agreed no, sure. to heavily invest in enthusiasm. No, it is the beginning of our season preview series. We are starting earlier because we are doing more of them. We assume because people are listening to a college football show to maximize the amount of college football would be a, a wise thing. So we are we're quite excited we are going to do divisional previews, but we're going to hop around. So yeah. tonight, as you know, because you've downloaded the episode and you've seen the title and you're an enthusiastic listener and verballer who has hopefully, if interested in, has the, the discretionary income, uh, purchased a shirt to help support the show. Mm. Um, we we are doing the ACC Atlantic. Atlant- no, listen, pause for a second. <laughs> Can we invent some sort of mnemonic device? Yeah. To help us keep the two divisions of the ACC straight. I would say just ACC Fat Atlantic because they're fat with talent with Clemson and Florida State. Fat Atlantic. The Fat Atlantic. They're they're huh. obese with blue chips. Fat Atlantic. Fat Atlantic. <laughs> I don't that's as good as I can do off the cuff tie. This is not my thing. But this is the good news. We are not restricting ourselves to just the ACC Fat Atlantic. We are also doing the American West, which coincidentally features no, no teams. <laughs> right. Well, and now it's in the American West. So we've got the, the AAC a- West, ACC, Fat Atlantic. Yeah. And then the AAC West. Correct. We got all sorts have- of confusion going on here this evening. I don't have a device for that other than Ed Oliver is here for precisely four more months. <laughs> And we should celebrate that division because he is in it. All right. Well, thank you for stopping on by. We're going to try throughout the course of this show. At least mm-hmm. I am to try and come up with a better mnemonic device than Fat Atlantic. Although that's I pretty love catchy. Fat that is not bad, Dan. Yeah. And I would eat in, look, Syracuse, you can eat well. Tallahassee, no comment. Louisville, you can certainly eat well. Check out Ed Lee. Boston College, you can eat super well in the north end of Boston. Uh, Wake Forest, yeah, of course you can. Winston-Salem, you can eat well. Raleigh, Jody with an eye, going there later this week for work, and I've already looked up places she can eat. Looks great. I don't Clemson eating specifically, but you're close enough. You want to go to Spartanburg or But Dan, Greenville we're talking about we're talking about football here. We're not talking about food. Come on. I get wound up. I'm sorry. Get yourself together here. It's pretty. But you see what I did there is I just went through the Fat Atlantic so everybody can keep which teams are in which which uh, division straight. The more we use it, the more it's actually going to work. You know that. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It's going to work. Well, welcome back to the show. We are a football show. We're the Solid Verbal. You can find us out on Twitter at Solid Verbal. Also out on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Solid Verbal, as well as an Instagram account of the same name. You can mm-hmm. also email in at solidverbal at gmail.com or find our website, our current dinosaur of a website, which is shortly going to be replaced at solidverbal.com. Before we do dive into the previews, though, we do need to talk about our big announcement, our store, which 
Yes. We released last week, Dan. How can the fine people get there and what can they find once they arrive? I believe if you go to, and we partnered with our pals at Cotton Bureau, if you go to solidverbal.com slash store, S-T-O-R-E, that'll yes. get you there. That'll get you so, there. That's right. Easy to remember, solidverbal.com slash store. We'll get you to the Solid Verbal store. We released three new, comfortable, hopefully uh, well-proportioned for all bodies. There's men's cuts, women's cuts. I don't believe we have verbaby cuts quite Not yet. yet. Not yet, no. Um, so we've got comfortable shirts because surely it's warm and disgusting where you are this summer. And we also have a hat to help protect your beautiful face. Uh, three new designs, one of which is both on a shirt and a hat, sort of a scripty design. When we were going through it, there was like a, a Sonics vibe to it. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit of a Sonics vibe. We felt yes. it. Save our Sonics. And um, there's so there's a mint verballer shirt, mint colored verballer shirt. There's a letdown look ahead sandwich shirt that looks like a an old deli you'd find in a college town. Yeah, that is our that is our top that seller right now as of this moment. So yeah, solidverbal.com slash store. It'll take you to Cotton Bureau and uh, you can uh, figure out what looks best on your person and grab one because it's only about another week's worth of time that they're going to be available. Once they hit that time limit, they'll be yeah. officially off the market for some period mm-hmm. of time. Yep. And uh, then we're going to roll some new ones out there. Yes. We're going to keep rolling some new stuff out there. We're very excited about the coming days and weeks, at least on the shirt store front. And finally, before we go any further, we do need to mention that uh, we believe we've secured a venue for the live show. <laughs> we do believe we we are we have agreed. Uh, the big holdup with tickets is not really anyone's fault. It's more we're not control. The venue is controlling the ticketing. That's right. So it's right. not necessarily our speed. We would have liked to have start selling, liked to have started selling these a couple weeks ago, but you know it, we we really want the experience to be great. So we're upping the venue type that's from right where we've been in the past so we're we're grown-ups now. we're uh, we're that's classing it up a little bit here yeah for a very regal occasion as we've said time and time again should we dress up Ooh. it's gonna be real gross but we can change there we could think about it. we could talk more about this yes maybe we can use one of the social media channels to pull the general public but the fantasy things draft the live fantasy things draft we've got all sorts of fun tricks in the queue for mm-hmm. that again, August the 11th in Chicago, a currently unnamed venue, but soon to be revealed. We will be selling tickets. Please stay tuned. First and foremost to our newsletter, we will publish the link there first. Yes, it is August 11th, which is Saturday. So, you know, some people coming from outside of Chicago might be easier to get to uh, on a Saturday rather than a Thursday or Friday night. And Tentatively, 7 to 9 p.m., just as for timing in the back of your head, if you plan on getting a ticket and coming. And we anticipate selling out pretty quickly. The good news is after the show, we plan on going to and announcing, you know, on this show, online, whatever. uh, We're going to go to a bar and hang out even further because if there's one thing we believe in, it's we really like hanging with people who listen to the show. Totally. So. That will be, you know, we will publicize wherever we're, we figure out where we're going to go. So that's the plan. Saturday, August 11th, Chicago, 7 to 9 p.m. with a uh, an after bar situation because Ty night, we get hungry. Yeah, man. We get hungry talking for yeah, a while. Yeah, we did. We did last time. Very, very mm-hmm. famished after yes. our live show in Atlanta. Okay. With, ACC, all AAC. That, with all that out of the way, let's talk about the ACC Fat Atlantic, Daniel. <laughs> Fat Atlantic. Yep. We are also trying something new. We're not just previewing divisions right. this time around. We also looked at this very realistically, okay? Mm-hmm. You and I, we're both married. We're both in our in our 30s. I suspect a lot of other folks listening around the country and world are in a very similar position. They mm-hmm. lead busy lives, right? The question is, if you're a Big Ten fan, why the hell should you care about the ACC Fat Atlantic? Why should, why should you care? Right. It's a good question. We kicked that around World Cup style. You know, we raced to the corner. We kind of kicked <laughs> it around. And before kicking it out of bounds to waste a little more time, we said, yeah, we we kind of like that theme, Dan. Yeah. Why, why should you care is what we're going for here. Yeah. Odds are, if you're listening to this show, you are not an ACC Atlantic fan because there's so much beyond the ACC Atlantic. But 
We are here to let you know that college football is an excellent TV show, and it just has a ton of characters that are worth diving into their backstory. So that's why we are trying to figure out, essentially, the care factor for the ACC Atlantic and for individual teams and storylines, and we will do the same for the American, the athletic, American Athletic Conference, whatever, <laughs> just the American West type. That's right. On that note. Let's talk about your ACC Atlantic, and let's start at the very top with the Clemson Tigers, Dan. They went 11-1 and last year in the regular season. Mm -hmm. They won the ACC. They qualified for the playoff. Couldn't move the ball against yeah, yeah. Alabama in the yeah. first round of the college football playoff. They lost 24-6, to if memory serves, and their season finished up at 12-2. and all things being equal, that's a pretty damn good year, is it not? Oh, it's excellence. It's another year of Clemson excellence. And on top of everything, it is worth noting that their attrition, aside from quarterback, you know, losing Hunter Johnson, Northwestern, but the attrition within the program, coaches, support staff, has been so minimal. And it has to be considered a huge factor in not just attracting talent, but as we've seen with this defensive line, keeping talent comfortable. They're like the uh, Western Conference of the NBA, but yeah, all on one team. Basically, what's worth caring about with Clemson is, on the surface, it's pretty obvious. They're stacked everywhere. It's defensive line porn. You know, we have Trevor Lawrence coming in as a true freshman and everybody raving about his ceiling. I think justifiably so in as much as we can determine in an offseason without actual live football. But right. clearly there is there is some nugget of potential that is, that is pretty tantalizing with him. And Kelly Bryant certainly had a pretty terrific year for a first-year quarterback, gets beat up, struggles mightily against Alabama, which leads to this sort of window for Trevor Lawrence, the incoming, or he's already there, the five-star true freshman quarterback. They have that fun early road test going to Kyle Field to play Texas A&M. And if that all doesn't, excite you you always will have florida state clemson to look forward to and this will be this florida state clemson game will be the first and it's in tallahassee it's a week after nc state measuring stick for willie taggart it's not a measuring stick anymore at this point with what yeah. clemson has accomplished for the tigers but for florida state this is the first big willie taggart power five moment consider the injuries he had last year at Oregon this and this is not his team and we'll get to Florida State momentarily but there's a ton to care about and I, I will turn it over to you Ty with this schedule which is tricky at AM. they go to Georgia Tech to Florida State they have a, an NC State team with a really good quarterback do you think if the quarterback play is merely pretty good which I think is a a, a pretty high floor for Clemson is that good enough to get to the playoff without great quarterback play? Absolutely. Okay. A hundred percent. This is a better team than last year. And that's saying something. We just went through the full gamut of how they went 12 and two. Mm -hmm. They've got most of their team back, especially on defense. And you mentioned Kelly Bryant. He got them there last year, but yet I, I went, I posted a picture last night on the Instagram account. Mm -hmm. I picked up Phil Steele's magazine. Right? You remember Phil Steele. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the real Steele dossier of college football. Yep. He's got true freshman Trevor Lawrence as his projected starter. Okay. I am fascinated because it's not just the Phil Steele magazine where I've seen this. I've seen this in a bunch of places just outwardly projecting Trevor Lawrence. Probably going to be your starting quarterback at some point before the end of the season. It's almost as if nobody wants Kelly Bryant to be the starting quarterback. And yet he had a pretty good year. He did stumble a bit down the stretch. But again, a pretty good season got Clemson to the college football playoff. He clearly did something right, yet no one seems to want to give him the nod here. And that interests me. That makes me okay. very interesting. I care a little bit more about Clemson because there's a guy who got him to incredible heights last year, and yet no one's giving him benefit of the doubt. So better team than last year. That's one reason to care. Second reason to care is the whole Kelly Bryant thing, which I find terribly fascinating. And then the third for me is the defensive line porn, which you referenced earlier. We'll play that again. <laughs> uh -huh. Cleveland Farrell, who we mentioned in an earlier podcast episode, 
and mm-hmm. Austin Bryant, both of them manning their respective side of the defensive line. And then Dexter Lawrence and Christian Wilkins back in the middle to sort of firm up the seedy underbelly of what is clearly the best defensive line in the country. Yeah. There's a lot of reason there to be very excited about Clemson. And oh, by the way, Dan, the schedule does not scare me at all. It just, it, (laughs) this is why my answer maybe was offhand to your question of, well, if they get respectable quarterback play, is it enough to get them back to where they were? The early game against A&M will probably tell us more about A&M than Clemson. I'm just Mm -hmm. not worried about that game at all. The two games that I think you watch, you mentioned the Florida State one. I think you're right. It probably says more about Florida State than it does Clemson, but it is on the road. It is Halloween weekend in Tallahassee. The road team in that series is just 3-13 and since 2002, for whatever that's worth. The other one is at Boston College on November the 10th. Clemson slipped, walked, slipped, walked the last time they went to Chestnut Hill. And I think it's an interesting matchup because Boston College is maybe the best offensive line in the conference. Clemson, the best defensive line in the conference. But otherwise, it sets up perfectly for Clemson again in 2018. They've got so much working for them. And there are, quite frankly, a lot of reasons to care. So interestingly, I think. Trevor Lawrence is in a similar situation, maybe as JT Daniels, like he may not start right away, but by, I don't know, wake and early October could be starting and playing different series. If he is starting at Texas A&M, that becomes trickier to me. That is still a tough place to play. Nobody really knows what this Texas A&M defense is going to look like immediately with Mike Elko. The offense is going to look different. So there's a mystery factor with a new true freshman quarterback. That That is a little bit worrisome. Uh, trip up point going, not going to, but hosting NC State. And then the, yeah. the thing I would have circled, and this is not, we are not unretiring anything, but in terms of trip up, losing at Syracuse, losing to Pitt the past couple of years, teams... Clemson probably shouldn't lose to teams that, you know, Pitt was fine, certainly a couple of years ago. They were they were pretty good with James Conner. I would circle going to Chestnut Hill, as you mentioned. Yeah. That's it's November 10th. I don't know. Listen, uh, Clemson's favored. They should be favored. They should win. But in terms of trip up, you have NC State at Florida State, Louisville, which could be a shootout y type team. We'll get to them before traveling to Boston. It'll be cold November 10th. <sighs> I don't I don't know. We we could go to Boston College next. We why don't Let's we, go to Boston College let's next. Let's go to I, Boston College next. That's the trip up point cuz they have South Carolina at home a week after Duke and so everything is it's a little even though we like South Carolina we'll get to that whenever it is that we do the SEC East. That is my pick for a trip up. See, I almost feel more confident in that Boston College game as a trip up point than I do Florida State. And I know that they're going to take Florida State very seriously. Yeah, I know that might defy logic. But again, last time they were in Chestnut Hill, Clemson had some issues. They ended up blowing them out, but had some issues in that game. There is reason to be optimistic about Boston College this year. And it wouldn't be the first time that they took a team like Clemson to the wire. Yeah, and I think they were just sort of ahead by 21 or something and took their foot off the gas in Boston College score. You know, it wasn't there was no. There was no fear, I don't think, from Clemson. Right. They're actually going to lose that game. But yeah, so we right. got we got reason to be very excited and care about Clemson. We I sort th- of agree. We we absolutely agree. I think they are poised for another run at not just the ACC, Fat Atlantic, not just the ACC conference, but certainly uh, look a top five finish in the polls, probably a playoff berth if all goes according to the plan. Is a very exciting season for the Tigers that we've got afoot. Just on a personal level, I'm very excited to see T. Higgins and what oh, he looks man. like out at wide receiver. Big target. If he gets more targets, let's see what he can do. He averaged over 20 yards per catch last year. Just throwing and that out there. I, I do have a good nickname for Hunter Renfro. Oh? And that nickname is still there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Touchdown, still there. Let's move on to Boston College as promised. We're not give doing me, this. Can in, you give me a Clemson record, regular season record, like before a potential ACC championship they're game? Go, they're going undefeated. Oh, I have them 10 and 2. They're going undefeated this year. Yep. Okay. Disagree. Two losses. Wow. Yep. Right. I have a trip up and either South Carolina, Texas A&M, uh, Florida State. 
Go to Boston College. It went seven and five a year ago. Um, how is it that Boston College has the same team every year? Have, you, have we thought about this at all? Just a defense populated with 11 Harold Landry's every year. It's like I was thinking about it a little bit. You know, when you buy the new version of Madden and mm-hmm. like, oh, maybe it'll be this different this year. Nope, not really. Kind of kind of the same thing every year. You turn off the passing cone. Yep. Same thing every year. Boston College, to me, could be a five and seven team. They could be a seven and five team, mm-hmm. depending on how things break. That being said, they might be the most interesting team in the ACC all year. Is are you saying that because they play a Pat League team week two? Um, just gonna have an extra little spi- like seasoning, <sighs> little spice on them. Yeah, they they play Holy Cross. It is a little bit of pizzazz for sure. Yeah. Okay. Walk me through the the variables between five and seven and eight and four. Well, the so the offense last year was lousy. But outside. still, but still better. Yeah, outside AJ Dillon. Yes, the offense you. was lousy, but still on the whole better than it was the year prior in 2016. And so this year they bring back ten starters, including their entire offensive line and AJ Dillon, who rushed for mm-hmm. 1,600 yards and 14 touchdowns. They really, truly should be better than they were a year ago. The X factor, of course, being Anthony Brown, a quarterback. If he can stay healthy, if he can be a little bit more productive, it's easier to buy into some of the thinking that Boston College is not only going to be a seven win, maybe an eight win team, uh, but also that they could trap a team like Clemson. That makes it easier to buy into. Uh, Defensively, they'll be fine because they're always fine on defense, right? Like Mm -hmm. that's just that's just what they do. They've got a good defense every year. Seemingly with one bona fide star this year, your doodler one, 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 doodler. is going to be Zach Allen, your defensive end. He, oh, so nice to hear that sound, Ty. Thank you. You're very welcome. He might be the only non Clemson defensive lineman to achieve true accolades, a true spotlight, because he is so damn good, Zach Allen, along the yes. defensive line, defensive end. And uh, I'm also interested, I think the big X factor, the big variable for them is the second half of the schedule because it's downright brutal. They've got a stretch where they've got Miami at home. They go on the road to Virginia Tech, Clemson at home, and then on the road against Florida State. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot going on here for Boston College, a lot of reason to be, uh, I think, somewhat caring about this season. Uh, Where do you stand? So they could start... They could be ranked by mid-October. So it's UMass, Holy Cross, at Wake, at Purdue, Temple, at NC State, and then Louisville. They beat Louisville last year. A.J. Dillon runs wild. They lose by three in a low-scoring game against NC State. Temple, I'm not super high on. Purdue can be run all over with a new defense early on with A.J. Dillon. Wake has a new-look defense and loses a bunch up front. Not worried about UMass or Holy Cross. So starting 5-1, and one, Six and one, if everything breaks right in close games, is kind of not crazy with a solid defense, a really good running game. And unfortunately, a quarterback, if you only watched the Florida State game last year, quarterback needs some work. That that's the that's mm, the sort of yeah. big X factor at this point. And you are right to sort of mention the brutal back half of the season with Miami, Virginia Tech, Clemson, FSU before getting uh what should be a, a nice and soft Syracuse defense late. Um I actually don't mind Syracuse defensive line. We'll get there. Um, But I I think Boston College, if nothing else, why you should care is because they were putrid. Wake Forest was putrid. And as we look at the ACC as a whole right now, and I I did some of this with the Danalytics stuff and the the points per drive differential, whatever the case, the, the bottom of the ACC is is sort of garbage free if we believe in North Carolina, which we'll eventually get to, improving to at least below average. The bottom of the ACC, and Boston College is squarely in the middle of the ACC. No, yeah. it's it's a nice situation. It's com- it's a competitive conference, Ty. That's what I'm trying to tell you right now. And the fact that Boston College is a big reason for making that jump and making it a competitive conference, perhaps the most competitive in the, in the widest middle class of any conference, is a cool story. That Steve Adazio has incrementally found the dudes to get things 
Com- like there's nothing worse than rooting for a team. Trust I've rooted for a Brady Hoke defense. Now. Yeah, you've done that. This is something I've invested in. You've done in. that. Yeah. And you can be down on a number of factors about Boston College just in terms of talent level and ceiling whatever. This is a competitive team. And that's a great reason to care that college football can afford us improvement so that if you are a fan of a team that has disappointed you for a number of years that there is hope, Ty. And that's that's what's really cool about Boston College. They're solid everywhere. They're not great anywhere specifically. And that'll make for a fun season. And they're going to scare the living crap out of Clemson, Ty. I am in. Well, if you're... So, okay. Let's, let's build on that. Okay. If you're looking for a potential scare mm-hmm. in the ACC Fat Atlantic, as we're now calling mm-hmm. it. Yes. In November, Boston College is a team you should care about. Because not only do they have Clemson, as we discussed, but they also have a road game at Florida State. Now, we talked a lot in recent weeks about this game in Tallahassee on November the 17th. Mm-hmm. Specifically, whether or not it's a, it's a trap game, right, for Florida State. Sure. Let down. I don't know if I, if I really see it, if I really feel it into my core. But I am starting to talk myself into it. I'm starting to talk myself into it. Just by by sheer nature of it being a let down look ahead sandwich game. Look at that sandwich. <laughs> I'm so hungry. Let's I'm talk so about hungry. This. Oh boy. Boston yeah, College. It, it for sure is. They get Florida State a week after the Knowles go to Notre Dame and a week before Florida comes to town. Correct. Which is two new coaches, yeah. Clearly a rivalry in the state of Florida. Meanwhile, in between Boston College, they're going to be physical. They're going to run with A.J. Dillon. They're going to play defense. Starting to sort of talk myself into this a little bit here. Yeah, and Florida State is not where they were in terms of the stacked experience talent where they were four or five years ago on defense. They're replacing all of their linebackers. Uh, up front, they've got really good pass rushers. Uh, I, I really like their starting defensive tackles. But in, in terms of what they're rotating in and out, they might be able to be run on a week after Notre Dame, and should as we you mentioned, should we sandwich, just yeah. should we just move on over to Florida State here? Let's go. Let's go to Florida State. Give me your final record prediction, which nobody's going to hold you to account for Boston College. Six and six. I'm going to go seven and five. It's somewhere in that five to seven win cone there. Yeah, they they feel like the Ron Swanson of the Fat Atlantic, just sturdy. Very sturdy. Okay, let's yes. go to let's go to Florida State. Florida State in transition, to say the least. They went six and six a year ago. Dan, now they bring on Willie Taggart. Never Another heard of him. dream job scenario. Perhaps <laughs> I, I would like to be the first to coin the term the Baby Knowles because Ooh, they've okay. got about three seniors in their entire projected lineup. I think that bodes very well for Willie Taggart year two, but what it what it means in Willie Taggart year one remains to be seen. Sure. So, Daniel, I will ask you, tell me, why should we care about Florida State? Give me some reasons. Cam Akers yeah. <laughs> um, is the place for me. Uh, Cam Akers ran behind a not-that-good offensive line last year and there's no reason to believe I know you know they're going to be healthier but there's no reason to believe it'll be dramatically better other than the fact that you know maybe they'll play a little bit faster so that's sort of that mystery invisible sixth offensive lineman on the field tempo so tempo should tempo not tempo I hope tempo doesn't help Florida State tempo should help Cam Akers as he gets bigger and faster and more experienced we saw the success Royce Freeman had last year in this Willie Taggart offense uh the year before that uh Marlon Mack at USF was a force to be reckoned with so just if there is a single reason it is that Cam Akers can win the Heisman with the the talent and if they have any sort of semblance of a passing game whoever wins that quarterback job he will be put in a good position you know this is the Willie Taggart dream job as you said Ty anytime you can compare a new coach to Randy Edsel's situation at Maryland I think you have to do it and that's where we find ourselves with Willie Taggart and I, I would add just because this is something we don't see all that often. There have been, I think, four teams to win a national championship since 2011. Alabama, Clemson, Florida State, uh, and Ohio State. Unless I'm missing somebody. 
And so a team on that level, as Florida State is, with the ability to bring in a ton of talent, should be winning double-digit games every year. They are a blue blood in, in college football. We don't get to see a reboot like we're seeing at Florida State all that often. Right. And that, to me, is a little bit fascinating. And even if you're a Washington fan, even if you're a San Diego State fan, even if you're a Texas Tech fan, it's kind of interesting to see what Florida State does when they have this full reboot period for the second time in about a decade, which is kind of crazy for a blue blood. But here we are. I, so, you know, I think I, I kind of agree with you. I think of when the Yankees decided to blow it up a couple of years ago, yeah. two years ago. Now, it ended up yielding fruit sooner than they thought in the Yankees case. We're not a baseball show here, but I'll take your word for it. Could that could that ultimately be? the same kind of thing for Florida state this season. Now, Lord knows they've got plenty of talent. They're loaded still on defense and really all across the field here. Mm -hmm. What will be the limiting factor for Florida state will be the schedule will be the schedule. First game of the year against Virginia tech at home. That's a pretty big game, pretty big game helps that it's at home, but still they've got a road spot against Syracuse which we'll talk about Syracuse. There's not a lot to write home about, but the Carrier Dome's a very weird place to play. Very true. At Miami week six, Miami should still be pretty solid. Then they've Miami got... should be good. Yeah. yeah, they've got this stretch later on in the year. Clemson at NC State in what may end up being a letdown look-ahead spot. We'll have to talk about that when we get there. Mm-hmm. At Notre Dame, Boston College, and then Florida. Nine wins in that schedule would be a masterful job for Willie Taggart, would it not? Oh, yeah. Uh, with quarterback uncertainty and s- installing everything new, uh, the, the defense is switching up pretty dramatically. And outside of Levante Taylor, you know, the, it's a it's a pretty decent quarterback conference and a pretty decent quarterback schedule for Florida State. And having secondary questions is not the best. So... Yes, if he wins nine games with that schedule, especially how it rolls up at the end, and I really do like some of, I I like the ones a lot, pretty much everywhere. I don't love receiver, but, you know, Marvin Wilson sliding in there. Brian Burns is a very good defensive end, as is Kando. So there's a a lot to love ceiling-wise about Florida State, but growing pains-wise, you're right. Going to Miami, going to Louisville. It's real tough. Real tough. It's, it's just a schedule. lot of road time. It's a lot of it's a lot of plane. It's a lot of hotel bed. It's it's not my favorite if I'm a Florida State fan. The Baby Knowles road tour mm-hmm. will be something to care about in 2018. Very quickly, because we do have to pay some of the bills. And we do yep. have what four other teams in the ACC Fat Atlantic we need to get to before we talk about the AAC West. Mm-hmm. Uh what can Florida State fans expect? from Willie Taggart. What what will look different from what we saw last year and the many years prior under Jimbo Fisher? At least one solid year of hard work. <laughs> <laughs> I can guarantee you... Actually, no, I shouldn't say that because I think it was just under a year, but at least 11 months <laughs> Okay, a very hard work and dedication to the program. Now, what what they can expect, obviously, is something they've already seen. He will recruit very well throughout, so that's off the field. Uh, he hired pretty well. I know the staff didn't come together as he would have as as he would have liked, but on field stuff, they're going to play a lot faster than they played with Jimbo Fisher last year. I think there's going to be it's going to be a lot simpler, and that is something that Florida State and Florida State fans have been clamoring for for the past couple years. And it's cool to say, like, oh, his offense is so complicated, and oh, Jimbo empowers the quarterback to make all these reads and adjustments. But sometimes you're just like, we have better players. Let's just run faster than the dudes in the other colored uniforms. So right. I, I think there's going to be a lot more speed rotated in and out of the game. There's going to be more simplicity. And he is going, and this is not necessarily different, but Willie Taggart has that sort of killer instinct that has served him well, both on and off the field, that I think is going to, it's going to have Florida State fans responding pretty positively in the the medium and long term. This year, it's going to be tricky, but I, I think they were due, you know, Jimbo Fisher's situation, not getting along with everybody, being distracted by, you know, just bickering with administrative types at Florida State. The, the program was due for a reboot, a reset, and the the new energy that uh, that Willie Taggart should bring in, 
I, I would imagine will pay dividends. Even with that end of the schedule, it should be a fun Florida State team at bare minimum compared to where they've been these past couple of years. Well, speaking of paying off, Dan, let's talk about our friends over at Lightstream. Let's do it. Want to know an easy way to save some money? Want to lower the interest rate on your credit card debt with a credit card consolidation loan? Why not do it with our good friends over at Lightstream? We've enjoyed working with Lightstream. They reward consumers who have good credit with a great interest rate and no fees. You get a credit card consolidation loan from just 5.89% APR with auto pay loans ranging from $5,000 to $100,000. You can choose your funding date as soon as today. And now, get this, our listeners get an additional interest rate discount on top of Lightstream's already low rates. The only way to get it, though, is to go to lightstream.com slash solid. That's L-I-G-H-T-S-T-R-E-A-M dot com slash solid, S-O-L-I-D. It, of course, is subject to credit approval. The rate includes a 0.5% auto pay discount, terms and conditions, and all that jazz certainly apply and are subject to change without notice. But you can visit lightstream.com today for more information. Check them out if you are in the market. Help yourself sleep easy. And oh, if you want to sleep easy, another way to do that, Dan. Uh Uh-oh. Why don't you check out our good friends over at Casper? Oh my God. I was actually I I was thinking pretty thoroughly about Casper about 14 hours ago. Continue though. Casper is a sleep brand that continues to revolutionize its line of products and create an exceptionally comfortable sleep experience one night at a time. Dan and I both have Casper mattresses. One thing we have not discussed is how Jody with an eye has acclimated to the Casper mattress. <laughs> Jody with an eye is on the Casper mattress at random times throughout weekend days and can't I may like the Casper mattress more than she likes me. I concur. That's how Dan. She, that's I'm how in a she, similar position feels. here yeah. with the solid wife. They have three mattress models now available. The original Casper, the wave and the essential Casper mattresses are perfectly designed to soothe and cradle your natural geometry, mm. not to mention a breathable design to help you sleep cool. They regulate your body temperature all throughout the night. And best of all, it is delivered right to your door in a small, how did they do that sized box with free shipping and returns in the United States and Canada. The best part of all is that you can be sure your purchase of a Casper mattress is right for you because they offer a 100 night risk free sleep on it trial. Mm. You spend one third of your life sleeping. You might as well be comfortable doing it. So we've talked about Casper ad nauseum on this show. Mm -hmm. We both enjoy the sleep experience. We enjoy the unboxing experience, perhaps a little bit too much, but (laughs) we've talked about our personal stories with Casper time and time again. We would urge you all to follow suit and give it a shot as well. And right now you can get $50 towards a select mattress by visiting casper.com slash verbal and use the code verbal at checkout. That's casper.com slash verbal. Your offer code is verbal. They're going to throw in 50 bones towards your purchase of a mattress. Dan, terms and conditions do apply. This is a totally true story. I couldn't fall asleep last night. I was wondering, I'm usually asleep way earlier than this. Why am I not asleep? And then I realized I had six giant mo- frozen coffee mochis. Yeah, that like do it. will do it. And... So I was just sitting there awake and I was listening to a podcast and then I was just laying there and you're supposed to like really think about like your breath and, you know, releasing your muscles from your bones to try to turn your brain off and go to sleep and you're having trouble sleeping. And my thought as I was laying there, remembering my very poor decision making with the the six coffee mochis was, damn it, this is a comfortable mattress. Absolutely. This is a really comfortable. I am, And then I passed out. Then you passed out. Let's move on. Let's go back into the ACC Atlantic and talk about, let's talk about NC State this year, Dan. Let's do it. It's going to be a hell of a ride, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. No, it, it 100% will be. Um, wow. When you have, it's, and this is kind of a theme both throughout the Fatlantic with certain teams and the AAC West 
is, okay, quarterback seems to be in a pretty good place. Either somebody's experienced in coming back and is a strength or somebody showed a little bit of a pro- promise can, to finish out last year. But that defense is going to be rough. Yeah, man. And it's, it's that's like, where NC State is. <laughs> it's all on Ryan Finley. And I do mean all because they lose Jalen Samuels, their H back. We talked about Jalen Samuels for three years. He did so much for mm-hmm. that offense as a runner and a receiver and you factor that in with Naheem Hines, who's also gone from the backfield. Yep. I feel great about their passing game because Kelvin Harmon, Stephen Lewis, and Jacoby Myers, they're all back in addition to Ryan Finley. But whoo, that defense, if that is not going to be MacGyvered together, I don't know what will in the ACC Fat Atlantic. Yeah, I, I suppose if you are into good quarterback play, this is this is why you care about NC State. You get to watch Ryan Finley, who was super efficient most of last year. Could be one of the first three or four quarterbacks taken in the draft, if that's something you're interested in. And there's going to be shootouts. Back half of that schedule. Yeah. Woof. So, I mean, this isn't all that different. Like, they gave up a ton through the air last year, even with Bradley Chubb, even with that defensive line. So, there's no real reason to assume anything too different from NC State this year. But that's fine. They were fun to watch last year. They were within a few points of Clemson, a few seconds of beating Clemson. Yeah. The back half of this schedule is they go to Clemson, to Syracuse, Florida State, Wake, at Louisville, and then North Carolina on the road as well. We don't know if that's super crazy, but right. this is another, and we didn't play this sound too much last year. We've already played it tonight. They have Clemson on the road October 20th, Florida State at home November 3rd. And where do they go in between those two weeks? Tell me, Dan. They go to the Carrier Dome. Oh, look at that sandwich. I'm so hungry. I'm so hungry. Oh, boy. That's a a letdown look ahead spot if I've ever seen one. I'm not going to, not with the confidence I had about Boston College and Clemson, say that Syracuse is, they're right there to just pick off NC State. But, Syracuse is kind of like a tapeworm. (laughs) (laughs) Ultimately, you're going to keep on living your life, probably, like Clemson did last year. Right. But you go to, you know, LSU had their struggles with just randomly with Syracuse. You remember Louisville back in the day, troubles. Like, they are just, they're going to attach themselves to your intestine. Right. And make things tricky for a while like you can get rid of them but only with really strong antibiotics yeah it's going to take some time it is going to take some time you go to western new york you're going to catch something yeah and that something is is dino babitis i don't know what syracuse tapeworm i think is an apt way to put it i you know so that of course is something that i think will be care worthy if you're looking at nc state yeah but you know they're intriguing to me because Outside of a couple teams on the schedule, right? Mm -hmm. With the exception of teams like Clemson and Florida State. You don't look at it and say, wow, there's there's like a ton of offensive firepower that they got to worry about, right? Right. No, there isn't. So, you know, for as bad as the defense could be, and we don't know, for as bad as they could be this year, their offense could just be good enough to offset some of the issues that they might have on defense. So they still... Who the hell knows could end up winning a bunch of games. I think that really lends credence to what you said at the top. A lot of shootouts this year. A lot of reason to be really interested in how NC State finishes in that ACC Fat Atlantic. Look, you could make a case for them to finish fifth or sixth in that sure. side of the ACC. Yeah. As absolutely. much as you could make a case for them to finish third. It really varies depending on how that defense plays and particularly if the offense can pick up the slack. The other thing that I'll throw out there that I don't think you mentioned, you might have, and if you did, I apologize. There's a pretty big litmus test week three against West Virginia, which could Correct. be I was just gonna go there, yeah. a ton of fun to watch, especially given the fact that both teams are on track to put up a lot of points this year. This is true. And they're they're very similar. They're, you know, they have that quarterback who is pretty well regarded. They have the receiving experience and talent, defense with huge questions. That'll be fun. It will 100. I think that's an afternoon 3:30 kick. Yeah, that's going to be after two. And listen, I'm not going to put down JMU. This is a, a powerhouse program, but they should beat JMU. They, they be better beat Madison. JMU. 
They yeah. better. Dave Doran almost took the Tennessee job. They better beat JMU. <laughs> The other great thing about just in terms of schedule is they miss Miami, Virginia Tech, and Georgia Tech cross division wise, and no Notre Dame this year. No Notre Dame, that's right. Yeah. It's a nice year to have to rely on some smoke and mirrors and one single right arm for success. I know they go to Clemson and to the Carrier Dome in consecutive weeks, and the, the, the back half of their schedule, they go to Louisville, and maybe Juwan Pass, you know, beyond having an excellent name, is going to be incredible. But all things considered, this would be this should be at the very least another fun team, right? It should be a fun team. It won't be fun against a team like Boston College. It's just going to run the ball forty times. That will be as they should. I think that will be a bit of an issue for NC State. But otherwise, yeah, yeah it's um, going to be a hell of a ride. That's the best I can say. Yeah, it's a it's things. If things lined up like this last year, it would have been ideal schedule wise but great fun this is good this is a north carolina state is a perfect example of you're a fan of somebody 1800 miles away nc state's gonna be a good tv show this year let's talk about the syracuse tapeworm shall we (laughs) i'd love to they went four and eight last year grungy eric dungy is back in what feels like his 17th season now i'm rooting for him i like that he's randomly from portland and got a last second syracuse offer and was like okay sure whatever We're talking about a team with no true game breakers on offense. No. The defense, surprisingly, is actually stronger for Syracuse this year. Stronger than I think we're used to. But the fact remains that Syracuse is 1-15 in in their last four Novembers, Dan. Ah. Bowl eligibility is going to come down to games at Wake and Boston College. And at home against Louisville, we've got a neutral cider in there. Also in November, Louisville against Notre Dame. They may need to win two or three of those games late in the year to get bowl eligible. And I feel like that's an awful lot to ask. Where is that Notre Dame game? It's at Yankee Stadium, Dan. Yankee Stadium. Okay. The de facto pinstripe bowl, but not really the pinstripe bowl. Oh, and you have your hat. You're all set if you would decide to to head on down to the Bronx. There's also, as we mentioned earlier, games in the Carrier Dome versus Florida State versus NC State versus Louisville. 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 Who we'll talk about here in just a little bit. The conventional logic, Dan, Mm -hmm. was that Syracuse was going to take a big leap forward last year, and that did not really happen. It was a tough schedule. Eric Dungy missed, I think, the last, what, three games of the year? Mm Mm-hmm. And it kind of came apart on them. Now they've got a fair amount of experience coming back in the ACC. I don't know if I'm expecting a breakthrough here for Dino Babers. I want there to be a breakthrough. I really do. I'm just not feeling it. So, a few notes about Syracuse. One, schedule is actually pretty awesome. When you look at it, so this is another team. No Georgia Tech, no Virginia Tech, no Miami. When you have a suspect defense, I, I agree with you that their defense should be better. That's mostly because their defensive line is experienced and I think should make some plays. Behind that defensive line, I don't know how happy I am with this Q's defense, but listen, they go to Western Michigan, fine. Wagner, fine. Florida State is at home. They're going to lose that game most likely, but whatever. It's at home at least. They have UConn at home. They go to Clemson, to Pitt. They, these are like going to Pitt is not... I don't, Pitt's going to start... Who at the the, the retread <laughs> USC Alabama like this Pitt's going to be not great probably this year. Um, the road games back half of the schedule when things hypothetically get tough and you're wounded and beat up like as Syracuse was last year they go to Wake they have Notre Dame they're gonna lose to Notre Dame at Yankee Stadium but they're not going to South Bend and they go to Boston College so this is not a murderer's row schedule. Eric Dungy we are every digit we have is crossed that he stays healthy this year. There's a cool, like, the the quarterback room is an amazing story with Eric Dungy being a fourth-year starter, Rex Culpepper coming back from testicular cancer, okay, and Tommy DeVito being one of, like, nine famous Tommy DeVitos, <laughs> the bass player for the four, season, four seasons, Frankie Valli in the four seasons, Tommy DeVito, Joe Pesci's character in Goodfellas. Tommy DeVito. The, like, I'm, am I funny how? I'm, what, am I a clown? I amuse clown, you? Yeah. Tommy DeVito. Right. And Tommy DeVito is a four-star blue chip quarterback who may be the best pure passer in that room. 
So Syracuse at least has a Tommy DeVito. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know who's going to be quarterback by the time they get to, say, North Carolina on October 20th. But the Syracuse tapeworm is real, Ty. It is very real. And I don't know who's going to be administering said tapeworm. Yeah. But this should be a year in, what is this now, year three of Dino Babers? Year three. That year two, they beat Clemson. And we all remember that. And that was a a program-defining or at least season-defining moment for Syracuse before. I mean, they didn't win after that game. But it's set up that they could go to a bowl game this year. And that would be a cool story, all things considered with how down they were. And all of my bluster about the ACC being basically joke-free in terms of teams and basement dwelling. So I'm rooting for Syracuse to be an effective tapeworm. I'm not I'm not totally on board with your assertion here that the schedule isn't isn't that bad. Like, well, I'm just I think, saying I think it's a lot to ask late in the year for them to win two or three of those games that I listed mm-hmm. in order to make a bowl because that's what it's going to come down to. So we'll we'll wait and see on that front, but on your point of the Syracuse tapeworm, mm-hmm. a subplot could be that there's only one man in the world who knows the cure to the Syracuse tapeworm. He's hey. a man on the inside, and he's the punter named Sterling Hofrichter Jr. Oh, my goodness. What a name. If there's anybody who knows the antidote, it's somebody named Sterling Hofrichter Jr. I as, as a note that's not as entertaining as that, you can get into the Syracuse Wagner game right now for $6. <laughs> so a ticket is going to cost less than a hot dog at that game. All right, two teams left in the ACC. Let's talk about Louisville. So I mentioned Mm -hmm. how Boston College might be the most interesting team in the ACC. I think I really mean it about Louisville. Louisville, Louisville went eight and four a year ago. (laughs) It's in your head and I love it. You're so in my head. (laughs) Eight and four a year ago, they lose Lamar Jackson. Everyone knows the deal about Lamar Jackson. All right. Mm-hmm. Heisman Trophy winning quarterback was unbelievable. But now this year, they've got seven other guys who were on the team from a year ago who are back on offense. They've got four along the offensive line, and they've got their new quarterback, Jawan Pass, who's a freaking tank at 6'4, 230. And he goes yeah. by the nickname Puma, which I love. Love that. Love that we've got Puma Pass out there mm-hmm. running the show for the Louisville Cardinals. So that should at least be fun on the offensive side of the ball. The defense, Dan, also could be fun, but only in a very sadistic way. Just throwing it out there because I know they're bringing Brian Van Gorder to town. And just as you were once a fan of a Brady Hoke defense, I too was once a fan (laughs) of many Brian Van Gorder defenses. And Louisville fans, I feel for you. You may watch more Louisville games. This might be the care factor above even Puma Pass. Just... To, to bathe in the fact that you don't have to be invested in the BVG defense. Anymore. Somebody, please, I am begging for somebody out there. Somebody find me the article that is written, if it isn't written, should be written and will be written about the new aggressive attacking mentality that BVG is going to bring to town. <laughs> Somebody's going to write that article, Dan. I just, and we'll get to this, the back half of the show. I did just see in reading about, uh, I think it's SMU and Sonny Dykes who hired him. They hired Kevin Kane, I believe his name is, the NIU defensive yep, coordinator. Yep. Attacking yep. mentality, <laughs> baby. Um, they love it. It should be noted. Somebody's going to write that article about BVG. Do you think it will be, and you are in control of this partially, a top I don't know, six fantasy thing draft pick. Juwan Pass is a quarterback and his name is Pass. Oh, mm, that might be a little too dad jokey for our fantasy things draft. Who do you think is calling these games? I know. I mean, it's dad joke central calling these games, but I don't know. I mean, it's in the conversation. We'll put it there. It's It's on my list. It's so blunt and direct. I wish there were like a if there were a long snapper named Broderick Snappington, right? <laughs> that'd be, for me, that'd well, be a little bit better. See, instead of the pass quarterback factor, right? 
I think we might go with more of an ironic play, given the fact that Jawan Pass's nickname is Puma, yet he's 6'4", 230. The Puma, of course, being a regal, sinewy beast Ooh, out on the... Sinewy. Yeah, out on the, uh, you know, western part of North America and whatnot. Right. Uh, and he, of course, being just an utter tank at 6'4", 230. Um, how do we feel about Louisville, Dan, other than those two reasons why we should care? How do, how do you feel about a eight or nine win Louisville team this year? Is that too generous? I don't think it's too generous. They return a good amount on offense. Their skill talent around Juwan Pass should be pretty great. Uh, the line, as you mentioned, is what? It's four out of five four returning out of five, starters. Yeah, yeah. So the, the situation the offense finds itself in, and namely Bobby Petrino, the, it seems advantageous. They open the season in a less than advantageous in Alabama, fashion. not good. So they play Alabama. Is that Orlando? Where do they play that Orlando. game? Orlando, yeah. Yes. They camping, play that game in Orlando. Camping World Stadium, Dan. Yes. And that feels dicey. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that, yeah. that feels like a dicey way to introduce a new quarterback. We saw that with USC a couple years ago and Max Brown. So... Outside of that, the the non conference part of their schedule, you know, they finished with Kentucky. It's fine. Road wise, I think it's pretty great. This is another team that is not. I mean, they have Georgia Tech, but they don't have Miami or Virginia Tech. So cross division wise, and they don't have Notre Dame. So it's fine. Alabama changes the paradigm of saying <laughs> their a, schedule is fine. Just a little bit. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, defensively, linebacker is intriguing up front. I'm not scared of too much, especially given the defensive coordinator and the scheme. You're going to be able to throw on this Louisville team a good amount. The good news for them is a lot of these teams don't have super talented, proven quarterbacks, um, at least in the first half of the schedule. So that's at least... Again, outside of Alabama. You could, Dan, you could squint and find eight or nine wins here if you're feeling generous. You could also yeah. see it going terribly wrong and then missing a bowl. That's part of the reason why I think Louisville has a high care factor in the ACC this year, why they're so intriguing, because, yeah, it could kind of go either way. No, you're right. I, I think seven and a half feels about the right over under. Yeah. I, I think eight and four with a couple of breaks, and if Juwan Pass works out, feels a bit right. I want to highlight a, a dude, if you will, if you can play the sound. Whoa, 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 uh, their right tackle is what is considered to be a big dude. <laughs> Makai Becton is 6'7", 360. Oh. And he's good at football. Jeez. And we've seen offensive line issues very recently with Louisville. It appears to be solidifying. They hired a new coach before last year up front. I imagine if Jawan Pass is able to develop throughout this season after the Alabama game, a big reason for that will be that line giving him time to throw to experienced receivers. And Makai Becton is the clear size and yeah, no, size class uh, of that line. So he is the, uh, as you look at pickup trucks, it's like an extended bed. Yeah. Makai <laughs> Becton. Uh, okay. Yeah. And finally, in the ACC Fat Atlantic, before we move quickly and buzz through the AAC West. Yes. Let's talk about Wake Forest, Dan. Wake Forest West. went seven and five a year ago. They were plucky. I enjoyed talking. I enjoyed predicting what would happen next with the Wolford Wagon. The Wolford Wagon has, has ridden off into the sunset. Rolled yeah. on. Yep, now we're talking about the Kendall Hinton era, which is going to have to wait a few extra games to start in earnest here because he was suspended for the first three games of the year due to Mm -hmm. a violation of team rules. Uh, So where do we stand here with Wake Forest? We know that the offensive line is back. Um, We know that the receiving core is mostly back. We know that Matt Colburn is back at running back, had almost a 1,000 yards a year ago. We know all that. We don't know a ton about quarterback. We'll wait and see. The real question is going to be that front seven, isn't it? Yes. That defense may be pretty rough, but here's why you care. And I, I would probably group this in that same Boston College, and I promise I'm not trying to, and I, I'm not being condescending in my heart about this. Wake Forest is a competitive team. This, like Boston College, 
matters. They're developing players on both sides of the ball. Duke Ejiofor, unfortunately, is gone. I mean, still alive, but no longer in Winston-Salem. And, you know, whether it's John Wolford, whether it's just the claw fence in general, it's good. It, life is good watching the ACC in Wake Forest. They yeah. were like a foot and a half from beating Florida State last year. That's right. They win a big shootout fun bowl game. Wake Forest, a team that's associated with the saddest moment in ACC championship <laughs> game history, <laughs> is a fun team developing quarterbacks. They are they have like an all-purpose standout, and he's a dude, but we don't need to play the sound again. But Greg, he is definitely Greg Dorch, yeah. which is a ridiculous name to say. It sounds fake. It sounds like he sells Spokane better than any other realtor in the area. Yeah. Trust Greg Dorch with your ranch house. But Greg Dorch is really fun. He could be a Debo-type impact player for Wake. I like this situation for Wake a lot. They're not all that different from a couple of these other teams that are going to rely on shootouts. But schematically on offense, with a with a line that's in place, and at least a promising quarterback, we think in Kendall Hinton, there's a lot to like. Again, adding to the joke-free-ness of the ACC which I can name a couple of other major conferences off the top of my head that are nowhere near as joke-free as the ACC. Joke-free ACC, I like it. It's got a ring to it. Can I Can Thank I you. confess something here? Please. Can I just get it out before we get any deeper into our season previews here? Come into my safe arms, Ty. There, there, are, there are deep, dark, unspoken moments when I forget that Dave Duran and Dave Clawson are different people. <laughs> It's okay. Dave is a very ACC name. And I'm not so proud of that because Dave Clawson, hey, he's he's done a really good job. Last year was mm-hmm. fun to watch. He's 2-0 and in Bulls. He's 21-29 and overall at Wake Forest, which is not, not an easy task. It's a full from scratch project that he has succeeded thus far with. And if there is any one wish I have for Wake Forest is please get rid of the WF helmet decal. Yeah, I they could do so much better. Go serifs. full Demon Deacon. Full Demon Deacon. Do something. If if you're refreshing successfully with the claw fence, refresh the look. Please, 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 please. Get Just mess up that hat. Do something. Just write claw fence on it, but capitalize the W and the F. Oh, do something. Happy medium. What's their schedule like? Is it is Wake's schedule? Like, could they finish with? It, it seems, let's see, they go to Florida State. They open at Tulane, which is going to be tricky. That's a Thursday night opener. Um, and they have Florida State and Louisville on the road in consecutive weeks. Not like uh, the worst road schedule here. No, and they have a, a, a bye week before that Florida State-Louisville double dip. Yeah. All right. But cool no, offense. they finish, listen, this they finish with Syracuse, NC State on the road, Pitt, and going to Duke. It's It feels like they could go to a bowl game again, which is great. I tell you right now, NC State might get torched by the Dorch. Torched by the Dorch. Could see that happen. Dorch. Yeah. Louisville, with that BVG defense, they could get torched by the Dorch. <laughs> torched by the Dorch. Just saying. So yep. there you go. We went through the ACC Fat Atlantic. Mm-hmm. Uh, all seven teams of it, Dan. Yes. Please write in, sellverbal at gmail.com. Let us know your thoughts. We're also available on Twitter. Facebook, Instagram, all those hot spots. Let us know your thoughts on the ACC Atlantic. Mm-hmm. Very quickly, people have been asking us now for, gosh, I want to say it's been five, six years as we do our season previews. We've had different iterations of season previews. For a while there, we were doing our top 25 teams and our top 40 teams. Then we switched it up to conferences. Then we switched it up to, I forget whatever we did last year, but it we was, did it in Latin last year. We did it in Latin, remember? pig Latin Disaster. the year before, sure. Yeah. This year, we're going to go division by division. We've had so many requests to talk in a little bit more detail about the group of five. Correct. So we're going to try it this year. We're not going to devote a full hour and five like we did the ACC Atlantic. <laughs> but let's talk about the ACC West, Dan. Let's talk about why we should care about Memphis, Houston, Navy, SMU, Tulane, and Tulsa. You should care because, and I'm going to make this very simple, and I'm going to try to encapsulate this in a way that makes sense to my dumb brain. You know when you're watching Netflix, and you watch a show, and you go on with your life, you're not doing anything else on Netflix, you're making yourself a sandwich, you're going to work, whatever, and you come back, you come back to Netflix, and you say, oh, 
Because you watched The Office, you might enjoy Parks and Recreation. Right, right. Because you watched Making a Murder, whatever that show is called, you might like this, you know. Peaky who, Blinders. Who done it? Peaky Blinders, whatever. If you like The Big 12, if you like Pac-12 After Dark, you might like the AAC West. Ah. I am really, like, do you have Spotify, Ty? Is that a service I do, yeah, use? yeah, yeah. Discover Weekly is essentially knows me better than my best friends, my wife, my family, whatever. There is something very Discover Weekly about the AAC West. Did you like Pac-12 After Dark? We got Sunny Dykes. <laughs> Odds are astronomical that you're not rooting for Memphis, Houston, Navy, SMU, Tulane, or Tulsa. Because they're just smaller football programs. And I know there's talk about like, oh, there it's group of it's it's the power six, not the power five, because of the AAC. But here's the thing. Memphis is really fun to watch. And I have no rooting interest. I've only I've been to Memphis. I have no rooting interest in the Tigers. Houston's gonna be fun to watch this year. Navy's gonna be fun to there's questions, there's asterisks, there's ifs for all of these teams. But this is a TV show. If you like Khalil Tate in Arizona, I think you're going to like Derek King for Houston. That's took over at quarterback. Excuse me. That's Eric with a Q for quarterback. D. Yes, that's true. That is that Thank is you accurate. very much. If you like watching Georgia Tech a couple years ago, with Justin Thomas, whatever, you're going to like Malcolm Perry in Navy. And I'm going to hate watching Malcolm Perry in Navy <laughs> in San Diego against Notre Dame. Why are they playing in San Diego? If you like previous Willie Fritz option teams... He's going to throw the ball pretty effectively. Not him. Jonathan Banks. Right. If you liked watching those Baylor... Okay, Tulsa's going to... or Yeah, Tulsa's going to be bad. Tulsa's <laughs> almost assuredly going to be bad. But they might put up some points. Who knows? Ed Oliver's the best defensive lineman in the country. Yep. And he's on the same team as perhaps one of the most uh, fun new quarterbacks in the country in Derek King. Potentially. Yeah. And we haven't even mentioned Memphis. If you like watching last year's Memphis team, there's a lot back on both sides. They're they're going. This is going to be. This is Discover Weekly, Pac-12 After Dark. <laughs> and if that doesn't sell you on the AAC West tie, I need to go back to the drawing door board because I thought that was pretty good. That wasn't half bad, Dan. Yes. Not to mention Brady White from Memphis, formerly I think of what ASU, Arizona, followed, Arizona State, right? Followed Norvell to Memphis. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I think there are a lot of reasons to be excited about the AAC West. Yeah. And if you look at the AAC in general, and you look at teams who scored the fewest points, not coming from the West. Nope. I'm not going to tell you the AAC East is Discover Weekly Big 12, because it's just not. Nope. Outside of UCF. I am extremely, unironically excited. Like I would make the AAC West a DVR show. Hmm. I, they're like a, a great Tuesday watch. Like, I'm not going to be able to watch every minute of all of these games, but they'll be on YouTube, they'll be on some service, and I'll be able to skim through and have a grand old time. That's the AAC West to me. Discover weekly, Pac-12 after dark. I'll be discovering Memphis at Missouri on October the 20th. That could be a fun game. Yeah, it absolutely can be. Yeah. I don't want to talk again about Navy against Notre Dame. But I suppose if you hate Notre Dame, that could be interesting. Oh, by the way, we could talk on September 15th about Navy against Lehigh for a little we Patriot could. League seasoning. <laughs> we could. I anticipate it. A lot of fun here in the Who's, And Houston West. has a couple of Power 5 teams early, yeah, right? Yeah, Houston's got they Arizona, Arizona they got Tech. Texas Tech. They'll probably shut out Texas Tech with Ed Oliver. Yeah, I mean, the back half of that defense is, ah, you, your voice goes up a little bit when you talk about some of that. They lost a lot. But they're gonna be fun. Yeah, man. There are times. Do you have do you listen to your Discover Weekly? Sometimes. It is unbelievable. I've polluted mine because I listen to music when I work sometimes that is sort of like that chill, you know, ambient, productive music. And so that that pollutes a little bit. I wish there was a way to to change things up. But man, I love me some Discover Weekly, and they are not paying me a damn dime to say that. Nope. They are definitely not paying us a damn dime. I no. can confirm. Get at us, Spotify. I believe you have gone public and you are flushed with cash. All right. Well, yeah. that does it for our first preview show. Who's who's coming out of the West, by the way? 
who's coming out of the West? Yeah, which team do you feel most confident? You feel Memphis reloading a quarterback, new look Houston offense, Major Appleway and Derek King, and Kendall Bryles, we should mention. That yep. should be uncomfortable, but effective. <laughs> Is Malcolm Perry at the the same type of you know game breaker? I'm gonna that go. I'm gonna go, was? I'm gonna go Memphis again. Okay, give me Memphis. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that as well. They lose their offensive coordinator for the second straight year, but I'm going Memphis. I'm gonna go Memphis. Yeah, let's do Memphis here. Uh, okay, so here is the deal moving forward. Okay. Dan and I, we believe, have done uh, an alarming amount of planning. Yeah to plot our pathway through till the end of August. We've got a show with Bill Barnwell that we're very excited about. Non-football show that Gonna we've also weird. got Yeah, on the schedule. We've got our live fantasy things show, which we will release even if you can't make it to Chicago. <laughs> we want you to be there. But if you can't, we are going to put that one out there after the fact so you can listen. We think we've got a pathway through all the way until the start of the college football season. There will be a point here very soon, and by very soon, I think I mean next week, where we're going to start putting two shows out a week. Ramp it up. Ramp we're going to start. Up. We're going to ramp this machine up and start talking about more conferences uh, in the span of a week. So this is our warm up act. We've got more coming in very short order. The best way that you can stay in touch with us is, as always, our newsletter, which you can find at solidverbal.com. There's a sign up form. You can also go to facebook.com slash solid verbal, click on the big sign up button at the top of the page. We're also going to make sure we tweet out the form as well. If you are interested in that live show or any of our new merchandise that we're going to put forth, the newsletter is the best place and the first place that you will find out all of that information. It doesn't mean we won't post it on social media in due time. But if you want to be one of the early birds, and for the live show, I would suggest it because I think we're going to sell out very quickly. The newsletter is your first line of defense, the best place that you could find all that information out. Uh, I think we're going to do our best to at least give people some prior warning across our social media channels when we plan to put those tickets up. But uh, it's going to be one of those deals, Dan, where when we get the go ahead from our currently unnamed venue, we're going to try and put those tickets out there into the public sphere so people can start actually making plans to come to Chicago. Ty, as we ramp up, this is my final question. You ever had a ramp? A, ra a Like a bike the ramp? Vegetable? No, the ramp. A, this is a thing. Yeah, R-A-M-P. It is a vegetable. Have you heard of or seen a ramp on a menu? Oh, I've never heard of that in my life. Okay. I'm Googling I mean, this. this is, ramp vegetable. This is something I've only heard of probably in the last two or three years. Is that like this a... Is not, I did not grow up with ramps. It's like a, a super scallion crossed with... A really big spinach leaf. Sort of. Yeah. It's scallion shell. It's pretty good. You can roast them up. Okay. It's garlicky. It's a wild would, uh, onion widespread across Eastern Canada. Yeah. It's, I mean, you can get them in the States. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure you can get some ramps at Wegmans, Ty. Yeah. Okay. That is my, that is my food recommendation for the week. Ramps. You ever have a scape? Scape? <laughs> yeah. These are, it's another vegetable I learned about in the last. Jesus. Years or so. No. Have you. Oh, those are good, too. Okay. I'm going to take your word for it, Dan. It's They're sort of rooty. It's like if you were going to order vegetables. Rudy. Like a vegetable. Rudy. 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 No, different Rudy. Okay. You got to get in the vegetables, Ty, before the season starts. When all, right. all hell breaks loose in your stomach. That's the only reason I bring it up. Ramps and scapes. Fun to say. On that note for that fine gentleman over there in New York City, for myself, Ty Hildebrand over here in Eastern PA, thanks again for tuning in. We will be back Next week, you'll hear more of us next week. Stay tuned for ticket information. Please do hit up the new Solid Verbal store at solidverbal.com slash store if you want to buy some of the cool t-shirts that we put out there. We'll catch you all in a week. In the meantime, stay solid. Peace.